Good evening and welcome to Robin Roberts Stadium here at Lamphere Park in Springfield for the IHSA Class A Boys Baseball Championship. Should be a good game here tonight. 34 and 4 Newton Eagles taking on the 22 and 14 Monmouth Zippers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Casey Kaler, along with the athletic director and head baseball coach at Roanoke Benson, Bill Zeman. And Bill, looking forward to a good game here tonight. You know, it promises to be a great evening of baseball for our Class A high school ball with two teams that are well suited with to play against each other. Let's take a look at the road to Springfield for both of these teams. First for the visiting team, the Monmouth Zippers, their road here to Springfield as they had a great sectional championship victory over Beardstown. As you see, pounding the baseball 12 to three the final there. They beat Byron, the Tigers from Byron in the quarterfinals, four nothing. And then this afternoon, knocking off Armstrong 12 to six, really hit the ball well this afternoon. Now I'll take a look at the road to Springfield for the home team here tonight. The Newton Eagles, who come in with an impressive 34 and four record. You can see their quarterfinal victory over Freeburg, four to two on Friday. And they got by Benton in eight innings, two to one this afternoon. And then the sectional championship to get here to Springfield, nine to three over to Topolis. Gonna get a look at some very excellent Class A baseball players here tonight. Coach, uh, some of these players are really outstanding. And the key players first for the uh, visiting Monmouth Zippers. Well, for Monmouth, you have to look at Tristan Reimold. He's a leadoff hitter, four for four since he got, uh, or to earlier today, and since he got to Springfield, six for eight with four runs scored. Next, T.J. Lindbergh, two for six, two RBIs, hit 413 on the season, four home runs, second in hitting on the team, and may even pitch some today. T.J. Lindbergh, uh, as you get a look at his numbers there, pitching wise, Baker is scheduled to start for them, but T.J. Lindbergh may have to uh, end up going as Baker pitched uh, on Friday, pitched six and two thirds innings. You see T.J. Lindbergh's numbers. He's been outstanding for the Monmouth Zippers on their road to Springfield to this Class A state championship. Now for the Newton Eagles, 34 and four on the season. Their head coach Schulte's had some terrific play throughout the year from a number of uh, quality players on that team. Taking a look at the uh, first player we're featuring here, Ross Wolf, who was outstanding this afternoon, pitched him to the victory, and he's been hitting the ball all well, uh, very well for him all season long. Yes, he's a key player who's a winning pitcher, as you said, in the semis, three for three in the game. Also, we have to look at Zach Wagner. He's a sophomore pitcher. He must pitch smart tonight, get ahead of the hitters, and keep them off stride if he wants to win this game against Monmouth. So you've got two teams that one in particular was hoping to be here, expecting to be here at the start of this uh, regional state tournament run, the Newton Eagles at 34 and four. Coming in though, Monmouth Zippers lost five of their last six games. They weren't expected to be here, but two teams uh, that are competing for the state championship. When you take a look at this game, what do you see as being the keys? First for the uh, Monmouth Zippers. Well, there's no doubt for Monmouth, they're gonna have to score early to put the pressure on the young Newton pitcher and the young team. And also the pitching is a question mark. Baker's arm may be sore, and as I said earlier, if he can't go, then T.J. Lindbergh will. All right, Coach, how about the keys for the Newton Eagles? Well, for Newton, they certainly have to get mentally prepared after a very pressured game, eight-inning semifinal game versus Benton. And as I said earlier, they need a great performance from Zach Wagner. Monmouth has scored 74 runs in the postseason, and he must stop their potent offense. All right, we are set for Class A Championship Baseball. The IHSA title decided here tonight. The Newton Eagles against the Monmouth Zippers, and we'll be back with the opening pitch. You're tuned to the IHSA TV network back after these local messages. And welcome to Robin Roberts Field here at Landfair Park in Springfield as we get set for the first pitch tonight. Class A boys IHSA championship game, the Monmouth Zippers and the Newton Eagles. And let's take a look now at the starting lineups for tonight's game. First, the batting order for the Monmouth Zippers. They are the visiting team. You see Reimolds will lead off and play second base. Miller playing center, batting second. Lindbergh batting third at shortstop. Lance will play third base, batting fourth. Baker in the five hole, he's the pitcher. Hall at center field, batting sixth. Soto's playing right, batting seventh. Rutherford in left, batting eighth. And Wiggins is the designated hitter. Now let's set the defense for the Newton Eagles. Get a look at the battery. That is Zach Wagner pitching, Tyson Dome catching. 
Helsley at first, Wolf at second, Beverly at short, Schulte, one of the coach's sons at third base, Palmer's in center, clear in left, and Hardigan in right. And a leading off here to start the Class A IHSA championship game. It'll be Tristan Reimolds. Let's take a look now at the umpiring crew working tonight's championship game. And we are underway. First pitch, a breaking ball from the left-hander, Zach Wagner. Wagner on the season, 2.90 earned run average, record of 4-1, 38 and two-thirds innings pitched coming into this state tournament play here in the quarterfinal round at Springfield. Second pitch falled off. So an 0-2 count already. And how important is it, Coach, uh, to get that first strike and get ahead on the batter? It is the most important thing from a pitching aspect. It really fools the hitter, lets you throw any other options that you have, be it a changeup, be it a curveball. And one of the things you profess as a coach, game after game, day after day, is the importance of getting ahead of the hitters. Wagner with a, a big breaking ball. As Coach said to us this afternoon, head coach Steve Schulte, he's got a good breaking ball. And a, a pretty crafty, sneaky, I think he called it fastballs. He got that one by him to the outside. So he retires Reimolds, striking him out for the first out of the inning. And Reimolds has been a tough out. He was uh, four for four in this afternoon's semifinal yes, win. Yes, he has. That was a big strike out there. That kind of sets the tone for what he can do. Reimolds four for four. First pitch now to Miller. Miller on the season for Monmouth. Batting second here, Joe Miller on the season, a 393 hitter. Had one home run and eight doubles during the course of the season. Big breaking ball to the outside. Wagner's established something early that he is not afraid to throw the curveball. Coach said earlier, he sets them up for the fastball with the off-speed pitches. Here's the 1-1 pitch, swung on and a shot in between. Great play in the hole by the shortstop to save it from possibly getting into the outfield, maybe extra bases, but he couldn't make the uh, play, and it's a sharp single to short for Miller. That was a nice backhand play by the shortstop, and you saw he tried to toss the ball over to the third baseman, which was pretty heads up, just couldn't quite get to it. Let's take a look at the uh, replay on this. Uh, excellent hit by Miller, and a terrific play by the shortstop, Josh Beverlin, to save that ball from going through. Uh, here is the third batter in the order. This is Lindbergh. The story on Wagner is that he does have a great move and does a great job of keeping runners close to the base. So we'll see right away if Monmouth is going to run. Miller diving back to the bag. The play on the throw from Zach Wagner to his first baseman, Adam Heltzley. 1-0 the count. One out here, top of the first inning. Just underway in this... IHSA Class A Boys Baseball Championship game. 1-1 one, one now the count to T.J. Lindbergh. Lindbergh on the season, their second leading hitter at the plate, 413 average. He drove in 31 runs, and here's the 1-1 one, one delivery you look taken at, for ball two. If you look at Miller, Wagner must have a pretty deceptive move because as soon as uh, Wagner lifted his front leg, Miller was going he back was to first back. base, so <laughs> that's a good sign for yeah, Wagner. You don't, you don't want to get too cute over there. No, you don't. Not this early. See, he rocked back again. 2-1 delivery. Got away from Dome, and Miller will take second. Took a big turn there at second, and will head back to second base. They're going to call it a pass ball. Is the official score, and let's take a look at this pitch from Wagner. Ball low and away, but still probably should have been handled without much trouble. And here's the shot right to the first baseman. Heltzley steps on the bag for the second out of the inning. Miller takes third. As you saw there, nice breaking ball, but right over the heart of the plate. And Lindbergh did a nice job of sitting, waiting for it. Hit a ground ball to first, moved the runner over to third. Score so a lot of ways from third. So with two outs now, Lance steps in. Right-hander 
Loops a shot. This could get over the right fielder's head for extra bases. One run will score, and Lance will be in. Stand-up double as the play comes in. So Lance, who's been outstanding during this run for the Zippers, he's two for seven in the two games downstate here. Let's take a look at this shot to right. You see a ball over the center of the plate, a little outside, carried very well to right field and got the big RBI. That's a big start for Monmouth. Zippers put 12 runs on the board this afternoon in their victory over Armstrong. 12 to six, the final there. Coach, they've been racking up runs left and right. Their tournament games, the first one was 11 to one. They won the second game 10 to five, nine to one in the regional. Then in the sectional, they won 16 to one and 12 to three in the sectional. And they put up, as we said, four runs in the quarterfinal game That's in cool. the victory Friday night over Byron four to nothing. And then 12 runs this afternoon. They've been beating the heck out of yes, the ball. They have. And you look throughout the whole series, uh, starting with the first game in the regional, they've scored 74 runs and 16 since they've been here in Springfield. And that's a very potent offense. This is Matt Baker. He carries a 356 average, 32 runs driven in on the year, and he's got a runner in scoring position right now as Lance heads back to the bag at second. The count right now, three and one with two outs. On, Top eight. of the first inning. If you're just tuning in, we're just getting this game underway here, the IHSA Class A Boys Baseball Championship. Monmouth Zippers at the plate with two outs. And this is Zach Wagner's delivery from the Newton Eagles, fouled off. And the count at full now, three and two with two outs here in the top of the first inning. This is a big pitch early in the ball game. This could set the tone for Wagner. Stepping out of the box now is Baker. Matt Baker, senior, six foot, 170 pounder. One of the many seniors on this Monmouth team. They've had a lot of success this senior class with golf. Finished third downstate in the uh, golf championship. Excellent basketball team. Lost in the sectional championship there to deny a trip downstate. And here they are playing for the Class A baseball title. Heading out to uh, talk with his pitcher right now is catcher Tyson Dome. Zach Wagner, what a position he's in. We talk about the senior-dominated Monmouth Zipper team. A lot of youth on this Newton team, and Wagner's a sophomore. Yes, he is. Pitching in a championship game. Yes, he's early in his career. He's seen what he's made of. Yeah. Left that his payoff pitch. pitch. Gets him out of the inning. That Strikeout. One nothing is the score. Monmouth gets a run in the first inning on Newton. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium at Springfield's Lamphere Park. You get a look at the top half of the first inning for the Monmouth Zippers as they get a run on the board. Let's take a look at the batting order now for the home team, the Newton Eagles. Ross Wolf will be leading off and playing second. Wagner pitching and in the number two spot. Tar will be batting three. Heltzley. First baseman batting four. Dome is the catcher batting five. Schulte playing third base and batting six. Hardigan at the number seven spot playing right field. Beverly is the shortstop and clear is the left fielder batting ninth. Let's set the uh, defensive alignment for the Monmouth Zippers. Matt Baker, who you see there, was expected to start. He warmed up, decided he could not go. He pitched six and a two thirds innings on Friday. So TJ Lindbergh is on the mound and here's the first pitch. Popped up by Wolf, a high. Top fly, and it is caught at the pitcher's mound by the pitcher, T.J. Lindbergh. So T.J. Lindbergh is the starter. After Matt Baker, we were told, would try to start. He warmed up, couldn't go. He threw six and two-thirds in their victory Friday. Threw a one-hitter, coach. That's asking a lot for him to pitch six and two-thirds of one-hit ball Friday and come back and start in the championship game, and they decided T.J. Lindbergh was their man. And I have to give coach credit for that. I mean, your first concern has to be the pitcher's arm, and I know that he was a little concerned going into the game about it and did, did decide uh, last minute to make the change. So I give him a lot of credit for that choice considering the magnitude of this ball game. Ross Wolf, who you saw pop up for that first out of the uh, side for Newton, was three for three in the sectional or the uh, semifinal game here in their victory two to one in eight innings over Benton. 
And at the plate right now is Wagner. Swung on in a foul ball to run the count now to 0-2 on Wagner. Zach Wagner, the uh, pitcher in today's game, the championship. He's a sophomore. Had an excellent stick this season for head coach Steve Schulte's Newton Eagles. 419 average on the season. Right-hander's delivery swung on and a shot in the gap. Looks like it's going to drop with a Texas leaguer over the second baseman's head. And Wagner's aboard for the Eagles here with one out in the bottom of the first inning. Here, Wagner took a good inside pitch. If you look, it went right off the hands. But that's one of the beautiful things about aluminum bats, the fact that you can get it off your hands and go over the infielder's head. So with one away and one aboard, Stepping to the plate now is Creighton Tarr. Tarr on the season, 433 average. Quarterback the Benton Eagles football team as well, and one of their outstanding pitchers. In fact, head coach Steve Schulte told us that he would be available for an inning, maybe two today if they need his pitching as well. And I'm sure he will want to go. Took the first pitch for a strike, swung on right back up the box, got through Lindbergh's legs, and the play at the second base, they say he slid underneath the tag. He's safe at second, safe all the way around. It was a good call by the umpire. He recognized the ball did beat him there, and it looked like he was out, but the ball was dropped. Let's take a look at the replay now. See the shot right between the legs of Lindbergh. Second baseman over there to make the play was Tristan Reimolds, and he dropped the ball as the runner slid underneath the attempted tag. And at the plate now is their catcher, Dom. Kyle Dom on the season, a 310 average. Lindbergh has not thrown a ball yet. Gets ahead of another batter here. Now he's got him at 0-2. Lindbergh's numbers from the mound, T.J. Lindbergh, 3-1 on the season, only 27 innings pitched prior to tonight's championship game, but an earned run average of 0 .52, 0 0.52, 30 strikeouts in 27 innings. Good eye. That impressive. pitch a little high. That was a purpose pitch there. I think he was going for the high, high strikeout pitch. A lot of times when you get 0-2 on a hitter, you either want to go up and up above the strike zone or low and away and then set him up for another inside pitch. That's a great strikeout pitch, 0-2. One out here, bottom of the first inning, two men on board, and he, he just that. got plunked. T.J. Lindbergh hitting Dom. So the bases are loaded with one out. And stepping to the plate, another sophomore for the Newton Eagles. Coach's son, third baseman, Kent Schulte. 5'9", 175 pounds, sophomore, 405 average. He's had a great series down here. He's three for six with three RBIs, one run scored. He's got an opportunity for some more ribbies right here. First pitch swung on infield and popped fly. it up. Yeah, infield fly rule, so the batter is out, making the catch nonetheless. Playing shortstop for Monmouth is Tristan Reimolds. Reimolds was scheduled to play second, and Lindbergh was going to play short. Reimolds moves over to play shortstop as Lindbergh is on the mound pitching. And at second was the kid who was scheduled to try to go tonight, and that's Baker. Not easy keeping track. No. <laughs> you have to have a scorecard, that's for sure. Stepping in right now for Newton, this is Hardigan. That's the first hitter that Lindbergh's gotten behind, and now is not the time for that to happen. Hit hitters start thinking fastball, and that's just what he might see, and he'll probably be ready for it. So two outs here. Swung on and strike one. So the count now on Hardigan. Two and one with two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. And this is Lindbergh working from the stretch, the pitch, and he runs the count even. 
His nice inside fastball. Yeah, Harden tied up on that one. There you see the count. Base is loaded. Two outs. Oh, and Hardigan just got plunked. Lindbergh. That pitch was not even close. Yeah. Hardigan just had to turn to avoid getting tattooed on the front side. Took it to the back and on the hit batter scoring a courtesy runner. That was Marcus Brooks with his fifth run scored here in Springfield this weekend. I know that wasn't purpose pitch. He'd love to have that one back. Yeah. Second batter hit this inning by T.J. Lindbergh. And Brooks scores. So the base is still loaded. This is Beverlin at the plate now for Newton. Josh Beverlin. Junior, 264 average during the season on the trip up to getting to Springfield. One home run, 12 runs driven in on the year. Chance for a couple of more right here, and that pitch swung and missed for strike two. So one, two, now the count with two outs here, bottom of the first inning. And already the Eagles have sent seven men to the plate. T.J. Lindbergh, who didn't really think he was getting the start here tonight, a surprise starter. He thought he was going to play shortstop. But Baker, who they called on to try to pitch again in warm-ups, his arm or shoulder, not ready to go. And so Lindbergh forced into action here tonight. Coach Reedy has to be a little concerned here with the number of pitches that Lindbergh is throwing here. Be interesting to see what... Uh, he comes to the rest of this ball game as things progress out. One two delivery fouled off down the first base side into the stands out of play. And now making a trip to the mound is their catcher Josh Hall to talk things over with TJ Lindbergh. All tied up at one. The Zippers would like to get out of this first inning just that way. Newton obviously. Looking to tack some more runs on the board here before we head to the top of the second. Bases loaded. Here's the pitch. Swung out right oh. back at the pitcher. Lindbergh makes the grab, and the side is retired. They get out of a bases loaded jam. We're all tied at the end of one. We'll be back after these local messages. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium at Lamphere Park in Springfield. You can see the score as we head towards the top of the second inning. Let's take a look at the umpiring crew assigned to tonight's championship game. Behind the plate, James Padberg from Patoka. Frederick D. Wiley there at second base, you see, from Harrisburg. But a six-man umpiring crew for this Class A IHSA Boys Championship Baseball game. Stepping in here now as we head to the top of the second is Hall for Monmouth. And he takes that pitch for a ball to even the count at one apiece here. The 0 1 1 pitch swung on and the throw to first, having trouble with the scoop for Newton was Adam Heltzley. So Hall is aboard first safely. Wait to see how they score that officially. Let's take a look at the uh, replay. The shot you'll see from Hall coming to third baseman Kent Schulte. It was a nice pickup by Schulte, but was the throw good. was a little short. Hey, relax out there, one oh, it's over. Was a little short, looked like the first baseman was gonna dig it out. And they do rule it an error. I'm presuming an error on the throw. That's what I would E5 score. is the official score. So an error on Schulte puts Hall on first, and stepping in now is Jake Sotos, the right fielder for Monmouth. Sotos, big left-hander. Looked like he was wanting to bunt there. Sotos 
in the first two games downstate here in Springfield. Just one of eight from the plate, buck 25. He was an all-stater for the Zippers in basketball. An excellent golfer as well there. Here's the delivery from Wagner taken for a called third strike. So Soto sent to the dugout as he looked at that third strike come across for the first out of the inning for the Zippers. That's another big out early in the ball game. Two things that will age a coach faster than anything else is a leadoff hitter getting on, and the other one is when the pitchers are pitching consistently behind the hitters. But uh, Wagner came back with a big strikeout with the man on first. This is Ryan Rutherford at the plate now. 328 hitter during the season. 15 runs driven in and a couple of home runs. Rutherford playing left field tonight. Wagner operating out of the stretch. Here's the 0-1 delivery. Got away from the catcher Dome and taking second on the pass ball will be Hall. They uh, officially ruled it a wild pitch. You see here the ball was uh, about uh, two foot short of the catcher. Mm -hmm. So Rutherford now with a count even at one with one out here. Swung on and it got by Schulte at third. Rounding third, headed for home. We'll have a play at the plate. Here's the throw. Hit for a slide and he's safe. Hall with another run scored for Monmouth. Give Rutherford an RBI. Rutherford stayed back, waiting very patiently on the big breaking ball. You see it break down. Check swing, actually. Pass third. And a gut he called. Left fielder was in, and uh, he threw him. Nice, nice uh, call by Coach. Excellent slide by Hall. Clear, really, with a pretty decent throw from yes. left field. but. Hall was on his horse, made a good slide, beat the throw with that second run on the board for the Zippers here. Top half of the second inning. This is Daniel Wiggins. You see his numbers on the season for the senior. Here's the pitch from the lefty fouled off behind the screen. I think Coach Reedy proved what he said earlier when we talked with him was the fact that they did play aggressive ball. That was a very aggressive running play. Wiggins is their designated hitter. He hits for the first baseman, who is the head coach's son, Bob Reedy. So one out here, top of the second inning is Wiggins calls time. 2-1 the count on Wiggins. The sophomore left-hander, Zach Wagner. Eyeing in, picks up the sign from his catcher Tyson Dome and delivers a big breaking ball that broke right over the plate for a strike. He does have a very nice curveball for a sophomore. Kind of a finesse pitcher, doesn't have a overpowering fastball. As coach said, high 70s, low 80s. Kind of in that Tom Glavin mode. He works the corners, paints the edges. He's got a big breaking ball. This one swung on. This should be an easy catch by the center fielder, Garrett Ulmer. And that retires a Wiggins. And the fly out to center for the second out of the inning. And stepping back into the binder's box will be Tristan Reimold. Reimold, a tough out. 462 batting average on the season. Downstate here, he's been even tougher. Six for eight for Rimals in the quarterfinal and semifinal games. As we said, he was four for four this afternoon in the semifinal win, 12 to six victory over Armstrong. First two pitches from Wagner balls, so it's 2-0 the count with two outs here. Top of the second on Reimolds. And you might get this one, Casey. I was just going to say, if we had Harry oh, Carey's old it. fishing net, we could have grabbed it. I thought you had it. <laughs> Left that in the truck. Oh, darn it. Producer, or, uh, you know, executive producer extraordinaire Jim O'Boy wouldn't uh, let loose of the fish net. 
Here's the pitch by the left-hander and the 2-1 delivery. Scooped up by the second baseman. Makes the tag at second for the out to retire the side. And we move now to the bottom half of the second inning, but not before the Zippers put another run on the board. There you get a look at head coach Steve Schulte of the Newton Eagles, his team 34-4 in just his second season as the head coach. They went 22-9 his first year, this year 32-4 before the two victories here downstate. Lead-off hitter swung on a deep shot to the warning track in left field, rounding the bases and heading into second with a stand-up double for Newton is Jared Clear. Clear with a smash. It got over the left fielder's head. We'll take a look at the replay here. The pitch from Lindbergh swung out and got some aluminum on that. Yes, he did. That was a high fast ball. And uh, I'll tell you right now, Clear was sit sitting on it, waiting for it, and drove the ball well to left field. And here's a shot straight up the box. A diving catch made by the center fielder. Excellent play by Joe Miller. As he laid out in shallow center field, made an excellent break on the ball, got a good jump on it, came up, made the catch. Things are going Monmouth's way here. He took off on the swing, and after a nice diving catch, an easy play at second base. Yeah, Very and then they were able to double up the runner, got up, made the throw. And he was standing on third. Yeah, he was standing on third. He had already taken off so certain that it was a hit. So they double up clear at second after Ulmer flew out to shallow center field for the uh, first out. And that brings up the leadoff hitter, Ross Wolf, here with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. And again, Ross Wolf, outstanding this afternoon, pitched eight innings of five hit, one run ball to get the Eagles in this championship game. He was three for three at the plate. They used the courtesy runner rule in IHSA baseball, and he had a courtesy runner run for him all three times he was on board. And twice that courtesy runner, Brooks scored runs, and he leads off here with two outs, trying to get something going again with a shot down the left field line. It could be, is he going to turn for three? No, he'll go head back, so he ends up at second with a double. I see what a big pivotal play that might turn out to be with doubling off a second base. Let's take a look at this shot from Wolf. Pitch from Lindbergh swung on and just got inside the bag and headed deep into that left field bullpen corner before being retrieved by Ryan Rutherford. This is Wagner up now, foul ball down the third base line, so. He'll be headed back with a count now 0-1 with two outs here. Bottom of the second inning. Monmouth in the field leading Newton 2-1. to one. Wagner noticed Lance was playing a little bit deeper, so he thought he'd bunt. That was more of a bunt for a base hit than a sacrifice in that situation. See Wagner's numbers on the season. Excellent batting average as well. The righty's delivery. He shows a lot of poise for a sophomore. So 1-1 now, the count on Wagner. Two outs here, bottom of the second. Runner on second, here's the pitch from Lindbergh. And he got the outside corner for strike two. Lindbergh during the season, as I said, worked 27 innings prior to tonight's game and had 30 strikeouts. Looking for a strikeout here. Foul tip. So Wagner still alive here, bottom of the second. The Eagles looking to put a run on the board to even the score. Turned out to be a beautiful night here at Landfear Park in Springfield after a kind of a shaky day. Here's a shot down the right field line, and the run will score. So an RBI single for Wagner. As it scores, Wolf. 
again, the sophomore comes in, shows that poise. Here you see an inside breaking pitch mm -hmm. off the hands in the right field. High the ball. Dude. Big two out single. Run scoring single for Wagner. So in steps Tar. Creighton Tar. Two outs here, trying to keep the little rally going that the Eagles from Newton High School have going as they've tied it up now at two. Well, it's been tit for tit, tit for tat here in the first two innings of play. Monmouth put a run on the board, top of the first. Newton countered with a run in the bottom of the first. Monmouth with a run, top of the second. Now Newton with a run, bottom of the second. We're all tied at two. I don't know, Casey, what do you think? I think Creighton Tar is a nice baseball name. <laughs> How about it? 5'11", 190 junior. He'll be back next year for Steve Schulte. 433 average here downstate. Tar is one for six to play. With one RBI. Lindbergh showing a lot of confidence in his curveball. 2-0 curveball sweeped over the plate. 2-1 pitch outside for ball three now. So in this position, Lindbergh certainly does not want to give Tarr a free pass here with two outs. 3-1 pitch coming up, swung on, fouled, out of play into the stands behind the first base side. That's where the fans scrambling for the ball. Right now it seems like Lindbergh is going to the curve ball as his strike pitch. Another trip to the mound for the uh, catcher, Josh Hall. Hall, a junior. Talking with fellow junior, T.J. Lindbergh. Well, an interesting stat on Monmouth. They started the season losing five of their first seven games. Of course, four of those first seven games were against double-A competition. So toughened them up a bit, you might say. And then, though, they ended the season. As we retire the side, Lindbergh with the strikeout on Tar. They ended the season losing five of the last six regular season games. As we head to the top of the third, we're all tied at two. You're tuned to the IHSA TV Network. We'll be back after these local messages. There you get a look at Monmouth Zipper head coach, Bob Reedy. Lead-off hitter with a, a shot, pop fly, and the second baseman makes the grab almost behind first base. So pop fly for Miller to lead off the third here, top of the third. First out on the first pitch. Again, head coach Bob Reedy in his fifth season. You see his record there, 74 and 80. A year ago, they were 15 and 17. This year during the regular season, 20 and 14 for making their big tournament run. They've won seven straight IHSA Class A tournament games to get to this championship game. Wagner still on the mound, working here in the third. Here's a shot by Lindbergh in the gap left center. This should be too easy. Standing up is Lindbergh heading into second. Terrific shot in the left center field gap from the Monmouth pitcher, T.J. Lindbergh, figured he'd help his own cause. Yes, for sure. This is a nice piece of hitting, too. He weighed back on a ball that was low and away. Here's a picture of it, low and away. Took it exactly where he should. Went to left center with it as a left-handed hitter. That's just a nice piece of hitting right there. So Lindbergh is on second, one out. And at bat now is Nick Lance. Lance on the season, some terrific numbers. 557, believe it or not, the batting average for Lance. He flied out, though. Sack fly advances the runner to third. So now two outs, runner on third. And stepping to the plate will be Baker. Matt Baker, senior, 356 average on the season. See his numbers there. First at bat struck out tonight in the first inning. And takes the first pitch. Nice 
inside for ball one. One of the things Coach Reedy was saying when we were interviewing him was the fact how many doubles they had this year. And the stat he gave was they were, before tonight's game, they were above 90 doubles on the season, which is an unbelievable number to begin with. And then two more added on this evening already. And we're only in the third inning. 1-1 one, one the count on Baker here with two outs. Top of the third, here's the pitch swung on, a fly ball. Should be caught by the center fielder coming over in the left center and making the grab. It's Garrett Ulmer for the third out to retire the side. We head now to the bottom of the third inning. Still tied at two, Newton coming up. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium at Lanphier Park in Springfield as we head now to the bottom of the third inning. Still tied at two, as you can see. And stepping to the plate to lead off here, the bottom of the third is Tyson Dom. Six home runs and 37 runs driven in on the year for Dom. T.J. Lindbergh still on the mound for the Zippers from Monmouth. Casey, we were just informed that uh, Monmouth now has nine doubles for the tournament, which ties a state record. So the next double will set a state record for doubles in the tournament. Here's the pitch swung on and should be caught by the first baseman. The foul territory making the grab was Ross Reedy to retire the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the third here for Newton. Kent Schulte, sophomore third baseman stepping in now. Numbers on Schulte that you can see. First pitch taken for strike one. So one out, 0-1 pitch coming up to Schulte here. Bottom of the third inning, still tied at two. Swung on and a shot to short. Scooped, here's the throw to first in time. Got him, excellent play by shortstop Reimolds. Tristan Reimolds, who does so much, coach, for this Monmouth Zipper team. Yes, he does. Every time you, uh, it seems like there's something important going on, his name's involved. So the uh, Zipper's trying to retire Newton 1-2-3 this inning as Hardigan steps in, Neil Hardigan. He's a junior, six foot, 160 pounder. 319 average for heading downstate. Now you see it at 309. He got hit by a pitch in the first inning, so he's not had an official bat here. This one swung on to third. A little trouble with it. The third baseman, Nick Lance, and the runner will be safe at first. Kind of short hop Lance coming into the bag area there, coach. Yeah, the ball seemed to take a crazy hop, although he didn't read the ball well. Oftentimes what you want to do is get it on a hop that is, uh, here you see it. You see a little short hop right in front of him, and it kind of skipped on him. You want to try to get that ball right off the hop. In coaching terms, we say we let the, that time you let the ball play you. So that brings up Josh Beverlin. Beverlin with a 264 average coming in. So two outs here, one runner aboard, and we're all tied at two. Bottom of the third inning for the IHSA Class A Boys Baseball Championship. Might hear a little background flavor. We've got the Union Pacific 7285 rolling through. Right on time. Yeah, right on time. It's the uh, 7.45 heading by it. It's no hurry, he must be slowing down so he can see the game. Exactly. Uh, taking out a little piece of Americana. Baseball, apple pie, Chevy and trains. Here's a shot up the middle, stepping on the bags, a shortstop to retire the side. Excellent play made by Reimolds. And we go now to the top half of the fourth inning.
still tied at two. You're tuned to the Class A IHSA State Baseball Championship on the IHSA TV network back after these local messages. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium at Lamphere Park here in Springfield. Earlier today, they held the IHSA Class A hitting derby, and there's your champion coach from Chester, Eric Cabby. Robert Feagan from Reed Custer Braidwood, Troy Lake from Fairfield, and Nick Lance from Monmouth, the uh, top four. It's been a nice addition to the, the Class A tournament. The hitting derby setup, uh, you score points by the distance you hit the ball, and there's a series of judges, and uh, it's kind of like a uh, another chance for kids to get involved in the state series. Leading off the top of the fourth inning here for Monmouth is Hall. He got on board in the second inning, his first trip to the plate on an error by the third baseman. Went to second on a wild pitch and then scored on an RBI single by Rutherford. Here's a shot to third again. Schulte makes the play this time, the throw to first in time. And that will retire Hall. So Schulte with a nice play there at third. And both times up, Hall's hit a ground ball to Schulte. Yes, and he's early on his cut against Wagner. In steps Jake Sotos now. Lefty swung on, ground ball to short, picked up, scoop, throw. And Sotos beat it out. Infield single for Jake Sotos. He showed some very good speed. Beverly makes, take a look at the replay here. Beverly makes a pretty good play on this. Scoop yes, made a nice throw, but Sotos kind just beat check it swing. out. Check swing, picked it up, threw the ball. Could have done he much better than line. that, could you? No. Sotos with a Ichiro Suzuki-like infield hit there. Kind of just slapped at it with the bat. He was off running before the ball seemingly was off the bat. Sotos with good speed, beat it out down the first base line. So that brings up now Rutherford. He singled, drove in a run in the second inning. Here's the pitch, big breaking ball coming in from the little guy, Zach Wagner, 5'8", 140. Sophomore really relying heavily on the breaking Very ball. Very much so. Here I was tonight. just to say the same thing. Have we seen many fastballs from Not him? Not many. He's throwing the breaking ball, and There's then when one. he has to, goes to the curve. The interesting thing is I haven't seen him actually make a move anywhere. Mm -hmm. For somebody who has you know, an excellent move, he needs to keep those runners a little bit closer. Wagner's delivery low and inside, and he walks. Rutherford, Sotos takes second on the base on ball. So you've got Sotos on second, Rutherford on first, one out. Top here of the fourth inning. Monmouth threatening, runners in scoring position and stepping to the plate now, their designated hitter. He bats for the first baseman, Ross Reedy. This is Wiggins. Daniel Wiggins for the first time up flew out to center field, so he's 0 for 1 on the night. That's the third batter that we've seen hit today in tonight's championship game. Wiggins on the season, 26 runs driven in and four home runs. Looking at that train going by out there in right field, center field. He sees uh, the coal loaded on those cars. Maybe pop that ball right into one of the coal cars. That'd be a nice pull. That would be a, a huge pull. It's 320 down the right field line and 320 down the left field line. Center field straight away is 415. In the power alley is right center and left center. It's 375 and uh, 350 just inside the foul pole down right field and left field here at Robin Roberts Stadium. Here's the 0-2 pitch coming up from Wagner with one out and a big high breaking ball that just didn't get anywhere near the strike zone. So 1-2 now the count on Daniel Wiggins. He steps back in. Yeah, 
Wagner taking his time. Breaking ball. It'll change it, looked like that time. That way out and ahead of it. Yeah. Way out and ahead of it was Wiggins. Here's the replay on the strikeout. See You'll see Wiggins sweep. way ahead of this pitch. Look at the excellent follow through by Wagner. You can mm -hmm. see why he has a great breaking ball. You watch, he pulls that shoulder on through. Uh, he's going to be a good one by the time he's a senior. Not that he isn't already. That is his fourth strikeout of the uh, game, and he just plunks Primal. That is one of the problems with the big sweeping breaking ball. If you're having trouble controlling it, uh, especially with a left-handed hitter, he has been coming to that side of the plate with it at times. So Miller now up. Joe Miller. He's a center fielder, made an excellent play earlier today. Diving catch in shallow center field and then was able to double up the runner at second to help get the zippers out of an inning earlier tonight. Here's a shot down the right field line, but it'll be a foul ball. There's a nice inside fastball up in on uh, the hands of Miller. He did a nice job pushing it off, though. Miller the first time up, singled to uh, just past shortstop. And in the third inning, flew out. So he is one for two on the night. Swung on, a shot to shortstop, picked up, play at second, in time to get the runner at second. And that retires the side. And we will head now to the bottom of the fourth inning. Still tied at two. You're tuned to the IHSA TV network. Welcome back here to the IHSA Class A Boys Championship Baseball game here at Robin Roberts Field at Lanfear Park. Leading off here at the bottom of the fourth inning, a single into left field by Claire. Claire now two for two on the night. He doubled his first trip to the plate in the second inning and has a leadoff single into left field to start the bottom of the fourth inning for the Eagles. Again, the coach's worst nightmare is to see that leadoff hitter get on because there's so many different ways that he can score. Homer bunted almost into a double play. Tried to lay one down the first baseline, got up on him, popped it to the first baseman, Reedy, who makes a good play, and then almost was able to reach back and tag the runner for a double play. So the bunt fails by Ulmer well, as he flies out. Pitch. It was a fastball that was up in the strike zone, and he tried more of a push bunt to get it down that line, and that's why the ball came off the bat with such power. So back to the top of the order now for the Newton Eagles. Ross Wolf, who doubled his last trip to the plate in the second inning and then ended up scoring, steps in here with one out in the bottom of the fourth, and the score tied at two. As a coach, you hate to see something like that happen just simply because you only have 21 outs in a ball game, and basically you give one away there without getting anything done. Wolf, a senior, he will be attending Wabash Valley College next fall. Next fall. He's had a, just a sensational senior season. 11-0, actually now 12-0, his pitching record. And here's a shot. Yeah, yeah. This that ball left center field, it's on the go. It yeah. is gone. By Ross Wolf, two run home run over the left field wall to make the score four to two. Wolf on the season. That is his eighth home run of the year. Tremendous shot to left field. When you see this pitch, it's a ball up in the strike zone. And Wolf did an excellent job of sitting back, waiting for the ball to get in the hitting zone, and he just crushed that ball. That ball was gone. You had a feeling it might be gone the second you heard it and saw it leave the bat with authority. Ross Wolf with the two-run home run. How many is that for him on the year? Now? That's his eighth. Eight. That is his eighth home run hitter. of the season. The kid is just a tremendous player. Here's he a shot that might drop 
Sliding grab made by the right fielder, Jake Soto's coming up to make the. So a fly out for Wagner to right. Soto's made a nice sliding grab coming in for the second out of the inning. Tell you what, Casey, throughout this whole series, we've seen excellent outfield play, not just in this ball game, but all around some excellent outfielders. And again, this is Creighton Tarr. Tarr, their designated hitter. Here's the pitch, swung out, and it gets through the box right up the middle. Diving attempt, nice attempt made by the second baseman, Matt Baker, but he couldn't get to it. And Tarr is on board with a single up the middle. Here you see a pitch it's a, in the inside half of the plate. The inside out's a swing. A nice attempt by the second baseman, but just couldn't quite get there. Batter did a nice job keeping his hands inside the ball on that so that he could push that ball in that direction. And you have to do that with an inside pitch. So with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning and the score four to two, advantage Newton. The Eagles send their catcher Tyson Dom to the plate. Dom tonight hit by a pitch in the first inning and he popped up to the first baseman in the third inning. So he is 0 for 1 on the night. The 0-1 pitch and he takes to even the count at 1-1 here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth inning. Swung on and missed that time. Lindbergh with the pitch that got by him for strike two. T.J. Lindbergh on the hill for the Zippers. Six foot, 190 pound juniors delivery here on the one-two pitch. Got him for a strike, called third strike on Dom to retire the side. But not before the Eagles put two on the board here in the bottom of the fourth, thanks to a two-run home run from Ross Wolf. And there you see the score, 4-2. Should be the other way around. Newton leading Monmouth. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium. All set to start the top half of the fifth inning. The pitcher for the Zippers to lead off the fifth here, T.J. Lindbergh. Lindbergh grounded out to the first baseman his first trip up and doubled the left center in the third inning. So he is one for two on the night. One one the count now. Wagner still relying heavily on the curveball. Zach Wagner, the sophomore lefty, delivers and swung on and missed by Lindbergh to run the strike count to two now. One and two the count on T.J. Lindbergh, who's ordinarily their shortstop when not called into pitching duty. And a foul tip, just got a piece of that to stay alive. Well, the Zippers, as we've talked about a couple of times tonight, have really been hitting well downstate. Here in Springfield, quarterfinal game, semifinal game, they were 22 for 62 for 355 average, but Wagner gets Lindbergh on what looked like some high heat there. He couldn't stay off of it, swing and a miss for the strikeout. Well, for the strikeout pitch I was talking about. For some reason, it looks like a watermelon coming in there and <laughs> hitters can't resist it. No, can't lay off, but that's his fifth strikeout yes. of the uh, night. So in steps Lance now. Coach, how would you like to have a kid like this on your team? 557 batting average, 61 ribbies, 54 hits and 97 trips to the plate, 15 doubles and nine home runs That's on the season. That's a career. Yeah, it doesn't count what he did the last couple of games either. That's for sure. Nick Lance wow. has been outstanding. Lance here in Springfield, two for seven coming into tonight's play. He doubled his first at bat, a uh, run scoring double, drove in a run and he flied out to right in his second at bat. So he's one for two on the night. This kid can hit the baseball. Yes, he can. Count now on Lance at one and two. One out here. Top of the fifth. 
Zippers looking for a couple of runs to even it back up as that pitch got away from the catcher, Tyson Dome. Should say Dom. And the count now even at two and two on Nick Lance. Lance a senior. And as well as he hits the ball, you gotta figure there's a place for him to play at the next level. I tell you what, uh, no matter what happens in this ball game, Zach Wagner has really impressed me this evening. He has tremendous mechanics for a, for a sophomore. Somebody's worked very hard with him. Mechanically, he's very sound. 2-2 two -two pitch taken inside for ball three. So the count full now on Nick Lance. Nobody on, one out here, top of the fifth for Lance. Here's the pitch. And a big curve on the outside corner. Wagner breaks it across the outside part of the plate for a cold third strike. Might have been a little bit generous strike zone on this pitch. We'll Let's just check call it out. It a back door. <laughs> back door back curve. Back door curveball. Yeah, it was back door, all right. And Lance goes down looking, so two strikeouts to start the top of the fifth inning here for Zach Wagner, who reared back and brought in a fastball there, the opening pitch on Baker. So that's six strikeouts now in the night for the left-hander, Zach Wagner. Some primetime exposure. Some tell you, he's prime time a lot of confidence right here. Right now. Sophomore, 5'8", 140-pound sophomore. 140-pound sophomore, huh? <laughs> Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch swung on for strike two. I'll tell you what, he's, he's baffling them right now. And the interesting thing was uh, we were talking to Coach Schulte. He said that he's not really a strikeout pitcher. And you see already, uh, what mm -hmm. is it, six strikeouts? And he's getting ahead of the hitters. Here he's one and two. And now is when it gets difficult to hit because you don't know what he's going to throw. Here's the pitch taken outside, breaking ball for ball two. Well, on the season, Wagner had pitched 38 and two-thirds innings, and in that time had 39 strikeouts. So he was averaging One a strikeout in inning. per good. inning. And we're in the uh, top of the fifth, he's got six, so he's just a little ahead of that pace. Here's a shot back up the box, got through for a base hit. That's Wagner nice. tried to backhand it as it was going by him, but he couldn't get to it, and it went right back up the middle for a base hit. Excellent shot by Baker to keep the zippers alive here in the top of the fifth. Single back up the box. Gotta love that nickname, the Monmouth Zippers. Yes, I wonder where that came from. You know, we had the potential. We had the Monmouth? potential for a zipper midget championship game. Freeburg midgets were down here, of course. And they were knocked out in the quarterfinals. In fact, it was the Newton Eagles that beat the Freeburg Midgets 4-2. to two. Here's a move. Here's a, a throwback to first coach. You were looking for that earlier. Yes, we were. And he does have a very nice, sharp, crisp move. Here's the pitch, swung on a rocket down the left field line. That ball was foul. And a sigh of relief coming from the Newton dugout as Hall was on that pitch. He need to lay back just a little bit on it. Here's the 0-1 delivery from Wagner taken outside and high for ball one to even the count now. One and one on Hall. Hall here tonight, reached on an error in the second and uh, grounded out to the third baseman in the fourth. This is his third trip to the play. Actually, technically 0 for 1 on the night officially. And he got that breaking ball to break over for a strike. So one and two now, the count on Hall. Throw back to first, the runner gets in in time. Trying to keep Baker this is a good close time to the to run. bag. He's showing some composure there too, you know, thinking about the fact that this is a good situation to run in. With two outs. But his move hasn't baffled because they're making one half a step back to first base every time. 2-2, two -two, now the count on the hall. Two outs, top of the fifth inning. 
Zippers down two, four two. Here's the pitch swung on, he retires his side. Strikes him out. His seventh strikeout of the night. So one hit, no runs for the uh, Zippers from Monmouth. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Newton looking for their 35th win of the season on top, four to two in this IHSA Class A Baseball Championship game on the IHSA TV Network. We head now to the bottom of the fifth inning. The New Eagles up four to two with a chance to perhaps tack on some more runs here in the bottom of the fifth. Four to the score as you saw there as we welcome you back here to Robin Roberts Field at Lamphere Park here in Springfield. I'm Casey Kaler along with the athletic director and head baseball coach at Roanoke Benson, Bill Zeman, who has been in this position before. In fact, Coach, you won the uh, Class A championship back in 1995, 30-0 the Rockets that season. Yes, we were, and that was a tremendous group of young men. Very special time for all of us. I can't even imagine. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's, from a coaching standpoint, it's the highlight of your career and can't be taken away. We've had great teams before and after that, but that was just a special group. This is Kent Schulte, the coach's son for the Newton Eagles, Steve Schulte, and he gets the free pass to begin the bottom of the fifth inning for Newton. Lindbergh issuing the walk. That's not the way you want to start the bottom of the fifth if you're uh, head coach Bob Reedy. It's his first walk of the evening. And here's a bunt to advance the runner picked up by Lindbergh to play at first in time to retire. Hardigan, but he did his job, advanced the runner over to second, one away. That's good fundamental baseball. He's still trying to get the runs, manufacture them if they have to, knowing full well that you've got good hitters coming up. Uh, that's the way to play the game. Sacrifice bunt by Hardigan. And Beverlin steps in. Beverlin tonight, 0 for 2. Popped up to the pitcher in the first inning. And it grounded out to the second baseman in the third inning. Let's go five. Let's go, man. Send him around five. Prior to the two games here in Springfield was a 264 hitter. Here's a pitch swung on to third, picked up, scoop, throw in time, got him. Excellent play by third baseman Nick Lance. We were bragging up his bat earlier. Here does a good job with the glove, scooped it, made the throw. And the big part of that play was the fact that he looked the runner back to second base, just froze him in that position. That, uh, that's almost as big a part of the play as the good mm -hmm. throw to first base. Otherwise, it gives free license for that guy to move over to third. So that's a, that's a very good heads up play. Held the runner at second, so now they've got two outs. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, stepping in. This is Claire. He doubled his first trip to the plate in the second and singled in the fourth. So he's two for two on the night. Jared Clare, one of the sophomores on this Newton Eagles team. You got a feeling that Newton's gonna be a force in Class A baseball over the next couple of years. Oh, you do. One senior starting. Uh, what do they have here? Two, three sophomores and the rest are juniors. That's pretty unbelievable. That is. Shows a lot of... Uh, says a lot about the uh, Newton baseball program right now. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung on, pop fly, heading down the left field line, third baseman underneath it, couldn't make the grab in foul territory was Lance. And at the last minute, the bull got by him. He tried to back up, tripped, fell over backwards, and the runner has new life. I should say the batter has new life. That ball was up, and it is kind of a high sky. You look out, you see some clouds, but Straight above us is nothing but uh, clear sky. And when you see that little baseball up there, especially under the lights, it's a difficult play, more difficult than what it appears. Here's the 2-2 pitch coming up now with two outs and a runner on second base. Again, the batter is Claire. And swung on for strike three to retire the side. So Lindbergh, after walking the first batter, 
gets out of the inning with no damage done. You see the score at the end of five. You're tuned to the Boys Class A Baseball State Championship on the IHSA TV network back after these local messages. There you see the Benton Rangers picking up their fourth place trophy from the uh, third place game that was held earlier today. Benton Rangers picking up fourth place. Armstrong picking up their third place trophy. Armstrong with the uh, victory over Benton. And as we lead off the top of the sixth inning, this is Jake Soto's with a pop up down the third baseline, safely made the play. Kent Schulte with the catch to retire Soto's here to start the top of the sixth for Monmouth. That does a coach's heart good. One pitch, one out. Depends on which coach you are. Well, that's true. That's true. You're saying that third base box <laughs> doesn't make you happy. If you're Bob Reedy, it doesn't well, do his heart any kinda, good. I'm kind of a pitcher's kind of coach, so yeah, I, I got to I, I, I knew where you, you were coming from there. Steve Schulte of Newton, it did his heart good. That's right. But Bob Reedy was thinking he had different plans for Jake yep. Sotos and that at bat. So one out. Top of the six, and here's the 1-0 delivery to Rutherford. Rutherford tonight singled, an RBI single to left field in his first at bat in the second, and he walked in the fourth inning. So he's one for one in the night. Here's the pitch taken inside for ball three. So Wagner now, three straight balls on Rutherford. 3-0 pitch coming up with one out. Nobody on. And he's taken all the way. Base on balls for Rutherford. I'll show that being the second walk of the night issued by Wagner. The sophomore has had pretty good control. Yes, he has, for the most part. <clears throat> but a big walk here with one out, stepping in the designated hitter, Daniel Wiggins. 299 hitter with four jacks and 26 ribbies on the year. And he was ahead of that. Yes, he was. You could tell, see his frustration as he <laughs> stepped out of the box. He's wondering why he can't hit that ball. Well, remember his last trip to the plate. He struck out in the fourth inning, and on a similar pitch, he got way out in front of a pitch on a full count. He flied out to center his first trip. So Wiggins 0 for 2 on the night, trying to figure out the... 5'8", 140 pound sophomore lefty Zach Wagner, who has given many members of the Zippers fits here tonight. Here's the 1 1 pitch, fouled back to the screen. It was that sneaky fast fastball mm -hmm. you were talking about. Spotted it well on the outside half of the plate, and uh, Wiggins was a little bit behind on it. I think he was expecting the breaking ball again. Wiggins, big kid, 6'1", 200 pounder. Senior, and he got him again. There's that backdoor curve again. Here you see the ball start way outside. Here it is, outside and just sweeps its way in. Mm. And Wiggins did not think that was a strike. They've been giving it, the home plate umpire has been consistent with that call tonight. Yes, he has. He's given him that pitch. Here's another big breaking ball, swung on, a pop fly to shortstop, and the catch is made by Josh Beverlin for the third out of the inning. So Reimolds flies out to short to end the inning for Monmouth. And the Zippers can't put any runs on the board in their half of the sixth inning. We move to the bottom of the sixth. Newton on top of Monmouth, still four to two. You're tuned to the IHSA TV network back after these local messages. There you get a look at Armstrong hoisting the third place trophy. Armstrong Potomac, third place in this year's Class A tournament with her 9-7 victory over the Benton Rangers in this afternoon's third place game. Armstrong losing in the semifinals to Monmouth by a 12-6 margin, but they come back and win the third place game 9-7 as we resume play here. 
bottom of the sixth inning. Newton at the plate, leading it four to two, and stepping in for Newton to lead off this inning is Ulmer, the center fielder, and he is 0 for 2 on the night. He flew out to center his first at bat in the second and flew out to the first baseman in his second at bat in the fourth. Count even now at 2-2. Lindbergh still on the mound for Monmouth. Rears back, fires, and got it by him for strike three. Strikeout for T.J. Lindbergh. Ring him up. Another high fastball up above the hands, and he went after it. That's his fourth strikeout of the night, Lindbergh. So stepping in now, their leadoff hitter, terrific baseball player, Ross Wolf. We've talked about him several times tonight. Their ace pitcher. Also an excellent second baseman shortstop, and he's terrific with the stick in his hands. He's going for another home run, but this one will be short. Left field may drop for a hit. It does drop in off the glove of the left fielder, and he takes second. We'll see how they officially rule it. Went off the glove of Ryan Rutherford. You see the shot, Coach? Yes. He left the... Uh batter's box disgusted but you see the ball hit at the heel of the glove and bounce out but I will say one thing Wolf after he took a slow start out of the box he did aggressively go into second base and did get a two base error out of it rather than just a single yeah E7 Jump on one. Jump on one. so Wolf is aboard on the air and this is Wagner Wagner tonight as he fouls that pitch to the screen. Singled in his first at bat. In the first inning, singled in his second at bat, had an RBI, and then flew out to right. So he's two for three on the night. Fourth trip to the plate already. Swung on and a shot right in between the gap between short and third for a base hit. Advances the runner, Wolf, to third. Wagner does his job. Takes an outside pitch to outside half the plate and puts it in between short and third. Seeing eye single there. Definitely. Taking a look at the replay. Here you see it, outside part of the plate. Inside out swing. Sliced it right between third and short. It's just good protective hitting. Runners on the corners for the Newton Eagles with one out here in the bottom of the six. Stepping in, taking the first pitch for a strike is Creighton Tarr. That is a, I agree with you. That is a great name a for a baseball name, player, huh? Creighton, get up there and Creighton knock tar. the tar out of that son of a gun. Right. One out here. And the 0-1 delivery outside for a ball to even the count at one. Well, he has done just that, Creighton Tar, 433 hitter, three home runs and 32 runs driven in on the year. Takes that pitch outside. For ball two. Tar, another one of the kids that'll be back next year for Newton. He's a junior, 5'11", 190 pounder. This ball swung on and crushed in the left field. They'll score a run. Wolf will score. Taking second is Wagner. And Tars on board with an RBI single to make the score now 5-2. That was a rocket. It was. And Lindbergh starting to get the ball up in the strike zone. Here on the replay, you'll see a ball up in the strike zone. A little mm -hmm. bit of a breaking ball, and he waited on it very nicely. So that's, that's why you die on that top half of the strike zone. You've got to stay in the lower half. Looks like they're going to make a pitching change. Indeed they are. And it'll be Matt Baker who pitched six and two-thirds innings yesterday in the quarterfinals. One hitter in their victory in the quarterfinals. He'll come in and relieve T.J. Lindbergh. 
to take a look at both of these schools that are participating in this Class Class A IHSA Boys Baseball Championship. First, the Zippers from Monmouth. Get a look at them from Warren County. Olympic Conference. Athletic Director there, Kevin Blankenship, as they make the trek down from Monmouth, Illinois. And for the Eagles of Newton, hailing from Jasper County, Apollo Conference champions, Mike Hartridge, the athletic director there at Newton. So that's on Baker. He what? Uh, he went six and two thirds innings. Uh, gave up one hit, five strikeouts, and four walks in his last outing, and picked up the victory. Monmouth, their other trip here to the state tournament back in 1989 under Dan Hogan, losing in the uh, quarterfinals. As you watch Matt Baker warm up. Baker on the season is three and one. We're 28 innings, a 1.25 earn run average. You know, when you look at this Monmouth team, you don't really see a workhorse, uh, Coach. When you look at the innings uh, coming down state, the most anyone had pitched was Tristan Reynolds, 40 innings. You had Miller with 39. It was about four or five guys that all had it's between 30 and 40 innings. I noticed that. It's very well spread out. Most of the time, you see at least one or two guys uh, with the bulk of the innings, and then yes. you know a third or fourth starter, but uh, not Monmouth. Very no. balanced, their staff. And this is Baker. That pitch got by the uh, catcher, Josh Hall. Both runners advance. It was a wild pitch. Scored as a wild pitch. Hey, trivia question for you, Monmouth. 1989, who did they beat in the sectional finals to get to that state series? Uh, would, would it be uh, the Rockets it, from Roanoke it Benson? It is, it was the Roanoke <laughs> Benson Rockets in the sectional finals. Spoken, spoken like a That's true coach. Right. I don't forget those things. No, I wouldn't think not. All right, stepping in, this is Dom for the Eagles. And the count now at three and oh. So Baker in a little bit of a jam here. Runners on second and third. One out. Here's the pitch, the 3-0 delivery, and he walked down. Walked him on four pitches. So the bases now loaded. And stepping to the plate will be Kent Schulte. With the bases loaded and only one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And his Benton Eagles leading it 5-2. Kent Schulte, who is the head coach's son, Steve Schulte, the head coach. In fact, Schulte has a lot of help from his sons on this team. Mark Schulte and Kevin Schulte are assistant coaches to their dad, Steve Schulte. And then, of course, son Kent, the sophomore, plays third base. And Carries a pretty good stick. Kent Schulte on the season, 405 batting average. That has to be a good I have would your think, sons huh? involved like that. That's that's wonderful. It's a family affair yes, there. Yes, it is. In Newton. Here's the pitch from Baker. And I'll bet moms want to keep them all in line. Yeah, well, you know that's the case. Yep. It's gotta be. No that doubt way. about that. So the one-two pitch with the Bases juiced here in the bottom of the sixth. Swung on, a pop fly, shallow center field. This should be a can of corn for Joe Miller. Well, like I said, it should have been a can of corn. Miller dropping it. Two runs will score. And that'll make it 7-2 now. He had Ouch. to lost that ball. Ouch. The only thing I can think of is that he must have lost it in the light somewhere because he looked like he was camped under it. Here you see Let's on replay. Let's take a look at the replay here. Here an inside pitch off the handle. And he's uh, underneath, he's underneath it, and then he just it, looks like he loses and it. And he just totally lost it, never saw it. Went right over his head. Lost the ball. I'm not much of an excuse maker, but one of the things that 
that is tough. If you don't play a lot of night games and you're not accustomed to that, it is a different setup when you're when you're playing under the lights. Uh, it, it's much easier to use, lose the ball because they're coming from every different angle. So three runs have scored in this bottom of the sixth inning for Newton. And they've now extended their lead to 7-2. Seven, seven runs on 11 hits for the Newton Eagles. Two runs on five hits for the Monmouth Zippers. Here's the pitch from Baker called strike. We were told that this is Monmouth's second night game of the year. So oftentimes at the high school level, especially class A ball, you don't have many diamonds that have uh, the lights. There's a shot down the first base line. Nobody's covering first. First baseman, though, gets over there to make the play. Ross Reedy with the unassisted out at first to retire the batter. And now two Eagles are down here in the bottom of the six. Another run scores on that play. Mm -hmm. So with two outs, shortstop, Josh Beverlin takes the plate. And the first pitch from Baker gets away from the catcher. Runner going to third. Here's the throw. Looked like it was in time to say safe. Well, it was a good strike from Josh Hall, the catcher. It really was. Uh, you look at Schulte, he delayed leaving second mm -hmm. base, and he did have a, a good shot at getting him. Let's take a look at the uh, replay here. It was a close play at third. Hall with an excellent throw. I mean, it was right on the money. It beat the runner. Let's go, five and the tag, I guess, a little late in getting there, right about the same time that Schulte hit the bag, so he's called safe. And at the plate, we pick it back up with Beverly. Eight to two now is the score. Advantage, Newton. And here's a shot in the center field. Single will score another run. Now nine to two as Schulte steps on home plate. It's an RBI single in the center field by Beverlin. Take a look at the shot here, coach. Inside pitch, waits on it, puts it line drive right down the middle of the ballpark. So in steps Claire. And they've battered around here in the sixth inning. The number nine hitter, Ulmer, let it off. This is Clark, their eighth batter in the order. And he steps to the plate. He's two for three on the night. And a throw down to first by the catcher, Hall. Runner back in time. Two outs, bottom of the six. 1-1 one, one the count on Clark as the Eagles have broken this game wide open here in the bottom of the sixth inning. They've put five on the board here in the sixth. Two teams traded runs the first two innings. It was 2-2 at the end of two, and then two runs in the bottom of the fourth for Newton. And that's where we're at heading into this bottom of the sixth, 4-2 until Five run onslaught here in the sixth. And Baker right now on the hill for Monmouth in relief of TJ Lindbergh. And that pitch taken outside for ball four. You can see the frustration in Baker right now. Come on, Over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So for the second time this inning, Omer is headed to the plate. He struck out to start this inning. And then everybody else picked him up. Wolf got things going. And actually, it was an error, if you remember. Here's a shot, pop fly. Shortstop can't make the grab and shallow left. Another one will score. So Beverly scores. Let's take a look at the replay. Another problem for Monmouth with a high pop fly. Shortstop going back. Just never really located the ball that time. Running with his no. back to home plate. 
And that's a pretty good drop coming off that infield. Something difficult to get accustomed to. And the ball was, you know, just out of reach. Yeah, Tristan Reimolds that time with a tough time making the play there at short. So now it is 10 to two. And that ball gets away from Hall. So the runner advances the second. Two outs still here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So two men on. And the batter at the plate is the leadoff hitter, Ross Wolf. A home run, and this game's over, Coach. Yes, it is. By the 10 run rule. Or a double, two run double. And Wolf has a shot single into center field. One run will score. They're going to that. score two runs. This is the ball game. Ross Wolf with a two run single into center field. And Newton is the Class A 2001 IHSA State Champion. I tell you what, you called that one, Casey. Single into center by Ross Wolf. Well, this kid's done everything for this baseball yes, team has. today. Pitched eight innings in the semifinal victory. He was four for four at the plate, three for three at the plate in the semifinals. Comes up with a two-run double after a two-run homer earlier tonight. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable weekend, unbelievable season for senior Ross Wolf. Yes, he had, and today has been a tremendous day. This is a day he'll remember forever. He had how many RBIs just even this evening? Four, two there. Four ribbies tonight. Four ribbies tonight. An incredible performance by Ross Wolf. He is your MVP. This IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance. Real people, real answers, real quick. And by the American Dairy Association on behalf of your local dairy farmers. Ah, the power of cheese. You're tuned to the IHSA TV network. We'll be back with the trophy presentations right after these messages. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Stadium here in Lamphere Park in Springfield. The 2001 IHSA Class A Boys Baseball Championship history thanks to a two run double in the bottom of the sixth inning by Ross Wolf to 10 run, the Monmouth Zippers 12 to two, the final score. You can see the awards presentation taking place now. The Monmouth Zippers getting their second place medals here at Robin Roberts Field. Terrific season for the Monmouth Zippers. Uh, I'm Casey Kaler along with head coach Bill Zeman from Roanoke Benson. And Bill, we were talking earlier after the semifinal game, Monmouth, they were happy to be here. Their head coach was excited. What a great season. Nobody thought that this team would get here when this tournament began a couple weeks ago. No, and that's what coach was saying earlier, that they didn't get the respect maybe that he thought that they should have gotten, maybe even getting the number one seed in that regional. And then to come all this route, uh, mm -hmm. that's quite an honor. Terrific. So congratulations to Bob Reedy, the head coach at Monmouth. and the players as they receive their medals. Number 11, Matt Baker. Number 13, Nick Lance. Number 14, Matt Cargill. Number 15, Frank Navarez. Number 16, Jess Miller. Number 18, Daniel Wiggins. Number 19, Eric Hanneman. 
number 21, Joe Miller. Number 22, TJ Lindbergh. Number 23, Jake Sotos. Number 31, Josh Hall. And number 50, Travis Algren. At this time, please meet the Eagles of Newton High School, who finished the 2001 season in first place with a final record of 35 wins and four losses. First, meet the principal of Newton High School, Ron Albertus. <laughs> Athletic Director, Mike Hartrick. <laughs> Head Coach, Steve Schulte. Assistant coach, Gary Wolf. <laughs> Assistant coach, Mark Schulte. <laughs> Assistant coach, Kevin Schulte. <laughs> Assistant coach, Jason Fulton. Trainer, Greg McDonald. <laughs> Players, number one, Adam Helsley. <laughs> number two, Garrett Ulmer. <laughs> number four, Neil Hartigan. Number five, Josh Beverlin. Number six, Creighton Tarr. Number eight, Zach Wagner. Number nine, Jared Clare. Number 10, Kent Schulte. Number 12, Brandon Scott. Number 13, Kyle Clare. Number 14, Jesse Weedman. Number 16, Marcus Brooks. Number 18, Ross Wolf. Number 19, Dan Hartrick. And number 20, Tyson Dom. Now, will Coach Bob Reedy and the captains of Monmouth High School please step forward to receive the second place trophy? <laughs> will Coach Steve Schulte and the captains of Newton High School please step forward? to receive the first place trophy.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, this time, the all-tournament team for 2001. At first base, from Newton, Adam. We'll be right Austin. back after these local messages. Welcome back to Robin Roberts Stadium here in Springfield. We're with the Class A champion Newton Eagles and head coach Steve Schulte. And they say Eagles don't flock, but I guess tonight everybody's flocking, uh, celebrating a state championship. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We had a great crowd from Newton coming up to see this. This is something really big, and I just can't. It hasn't soaked in yet. It's just great to be here. Tell me about the performance of the sophomore pitcher, Zach uh, Wagner. Terrific outing from him. Well, see, Zach didn't pitch any regional games, didn't pitch any sectional games, didn't pitch any state games. The last game he pitched was a regular season. But, you know, the, uh, when you're up here, you need three or four. And we used Ross earlier today. We used Creighton on Friday. Zach came through big time. And sophomore, he's a crafty left-hander, and he did a great job for us. What's it been like for you uh, sharing this experience with your sons? Uh, you're standing next to one of your sons, Kent, who played third base for you, sophomore. You got a couple other sons that are coaches on this team. What's it been like in the Schulte household? Well, when baseball season starts, we're all sitting around the table at meal times. We're talking about the team, who we want to pitch, who we want to play in left, who we want to play at short, and so forth. Uh, both of my sons are unpaid assistants, I might add, but it's costing me quite a bit of money, and uh, it's just a family affair. What's it like playing for your dad? Uh, it's, it's pretty pretty neat. Uh, a <laughs> little, little pressure at times, but it's pretty neat. All right, Kent Schulte. Coach, uh, congratulations, first of all, for a great performance. Uh, we've been in this position before myself. And I'll tell you what, uh, I know it's a very gratifying feeling. And uh, as a coach, it's something you won't ever forget. And I'm sure that, uh, especially when it's such a family affair, uh, it's, a, it's a moment that uh, you'll endure yourself to forever. Well, we've got four medals, so I don't think, and we've got a house full of trophies. We've got our regional, our sectional, our Gibson Southern, and now the state trophy. So I, mean, I know we're going to have to give them back to the high school, but they're all sitting in our kitchen on top of the refrigerator and on top of the kitchen table, so we look at it every day. Coach, I kept mine through the summer. You don't have to return it until <laughs> fall starts. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> We've got Ross Wolf with us too, the MVP of the tournament, and a terrific game for you. You had a two-run home run in the uh, fourth inning. You end the game with a two-run double in the sixth inning. When you were at the at, at bat in the bottom of the sixth with two men on, you knew that uh, you scored two runs, drive them in, ten-run rule. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But you know, if you get out, you get out. I knew Zach could go back out and do it because. He's a tough kid. He's got a strong heart, and I like that kid. He's, he's great. What's been the key to your success this season, uh, you individually and I guess uh, this whole Newton team? But you've had a terrific year, both on the mound and at the plate, uh, helping your team win. Uh, I just, I just, mainly the whole win, I just worked on pitching. And hitting, I love hitting. It's great. Uh, this is great. Coach, I was going to ask, and great it is. I mean, what, what more can you say, right, Ross? I mean, I, we can't expect him to elaborate too much beyond that. I mean, he did enough pitching and hitting for this team. Talk to us about the, the young man who broke his collarbone. I know you mentioned at one point that you were dedicating your performance down here in Springfield to him, another senior who I think is headed off to Wabash Valley College along with Ross Wolf. Yeah, Jesse Weedman is hitting over 500. He set the school record with 14 homers, 53 RBIs, led the team in stolen bases. And two days before the sectional, he dies for a ball at batting practice. Don't ask me why, but he dived at batting practice, broke his collarbone. And so he's missed our two sectional games, our three state games. And a lot of the kids have 14 on their hat. Yeah, see, uh, and uh, we kind of dedicated it to Jesse. I mean, we only have two seniors on the team. And, and Jesse is a big part of our year and winning the Apollo and winning so many games and stuff. But we could have used him in the tournament, but our kids just buckled it up and got it done. I, when Jesse got hurt, I told the kids that everybody's going to have to do just a little bit more, get an extra hit once in a while, make an extra play. And I think everybody just stepped up that little notch and we're state champs. And yeah, that's got to be really make it even that much more rewarding for you. You lose him and you have all these young underclassmen uh, and you still come away with a state title. I mean, it's, uh, I guess it speaks well for your team, and also it's tough for the rest of the Class A. Well, years coming up. you know, uh, you never know if you're going to get back here or not. 
and we think we got a young ball club, but we got great leadership. Jesse Weedman and Ross, our juniors are really solid players, and then we had some of these young guys playing, and, and I think they didn't know what pressure was. They're so young, they didn't know they were supposed to be nervous at the state tournament and in the sectional and stuff. Kent and Zach Wagner and Brandon Scott and Jared Clare and Kyle Clare, all those kids, Marcus Brooks, everybody's doing great. I'd like to ask these younger players, uh, I know it's kind of early, but uh, what's your plans from this point on? Do you have summer league plans and just continue on from here for what you're going to do, get to get ready for next year? Yeah, we got Legion Bowl this summer, we're playing that, and get ready for football season, and then long winter for uh, get ready for baseball again. So you can follow this up again, yep. right? Yep, we'll be back. Now, and a lot of our kids play football and basketball and stuff, and I think they were supposed to play a Legion game this weekend and they already had to cancel it. So probably next weekend they'll start their Legion system. And most of these kids will be on the team and play this summer. I think they could understand that cancellation. Coach, uh, congratulations again and uh, good luck next year. Thank you very much. Right. Steve Schulte, the head coach, his son Kent Schulte, Ross Wolf, the MVP. A terrific outing, terrific season, a terrific game for these Newton Eagles. They are the Class A IHSA Boys State Champion. You're tuned to the IHSA TV Network. Welcome back here to Robin Roberts Field in Springfield, the site of tonight's Class A IHSA Boys Baseball Championship that saw the Newton Eagles knock off the Monmouth Zippers 12 to 2. We're back with more of the Schulte family. This is Mark and this is Kevin. Did I get that right? Yeah. I got it right? Yeah. And uh, you guys with your dad here in Springfield, part of this uh, Newton baseball organization. Uh, what's it feel like to win a championship as a coach with your dad? It's unbelievable. I mean, it just hasn't soaked in yet. Like dad said, that, man, tomorrow we sure will think about it. And it's great. How about you, Kevin? Hey. We knew we had a good team going in. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Like you said, yeah. it was great. I'm going to assume that you guys taught your younger brother how to play this game. Is that correct? Is that how that works? Knows, yeah. You're going to take credit for it no matter what, aren't you? Yeah. Now, which is, let's get that straight. Which is 95 and 94. I forget which is which, though. So. 94, 95. All right, so what was it like playing with each other there for a couple of years on the baseball team? I was, it was great. I played second base. He played shortstop and outfield. And just. Great. But I guess younger brother Kent's got bragging honors because you yes. were telling me the farthest you advanced was what, the regional championship? Well, sectional, sectional sectional championship, yeah. Oh, you, you uh, said regional I, championship. For, him, for yeah. me, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, so yeah. after they got yeah. rid of you, they went to the sectional yeah. and the youngest. They just kept getting better all along. Exactly. Regional, sectional, state championship. That's <laughs> Any more Schultes uh, in the family? Yes, yeah. Do. Little Patrick. Huh? We have a little six-year-old brother. Six-year-old six brother. Yeah. Yep. Look out! There'll probably be a run of straight champions. Right, you know, yeah. three or four straight yeah. when he gets up <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Well, that's quite a quite an accomplishment for uh, for your town. And uh, I, as we look out in the crowd, uh, we saw you had a great backing. Has it been this way through the regional throughout the year? Oh yeah, it's always been like this. Newton supports their sports teams well yeah. in football, Everybody's basketball, great. baseball, everything. They follow follow us well. Tell us about the play of uh, Ross Wolf, the MVP. I mean, we were just thoroughly impressed with his tournament down here. Played uh, a great game to get you to the championship. Pitched eight innings, went three for three. Tonight has a two-run homer, two-run double. Has he been like this all year? Yes, that sums up the whole year. He's played that great all year. He's, he's the man, yeah. And then, and then you did this without uh, the kid who, who led you so yep. much through the regular Jesse season. Yep. Yep. A real testimony of the rest of the kids oh, yeah. and, and the definitely. staff, and, and, and obviously the kids all came through like champions. And what does it mean now? I mean, I think you only play two seniors. You've got all these juniors and sophomores. Yeah, uh, the rest of the state better look out for Newton, I guess. Entered the state tournament with only one senior because the other senior is out, and we'll be back next year, hopefully. Uh, I have one quick question about uh, the young left-hander that threw today. Uh, has he was he much expected much as a freshman? And did you see something here last year, or how did this come about? Uh, he's a tough kid. He um, just gets people out. He throws that little soft breaking ball and change-ups, and kids can't catch up to it. They just he did a great off. job keeping hitters off yep. off base. And uh, besides that, his his breaking ball set up his fastball very yes, well. He did. All right. Mark and Kevin, thanks for joining us. Congratulations again. Have fun celebrating. All right, thank you. Yes. Mark and Kevin Schulte, part of the Schulte family that was downstate here from Newton. They are the Class A 
IHSA Boys Baseball Champions by virtue of their 12-2 victory over the Monmouth Zippers. Again, the MVP of the tournament, Russ Wolf. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. All kinds of great people to thank, as you can see from Springfield. We thank all of those people. And this copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of the Illinois High School Association is strictly prohibited. Good night. For Bill Zeman, I'm Casey Kaler. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Take care, everybody, and God bless. Good night.